also presided over the SAC Academy of Ophthalmology Congress in Sri Lanka in 2014. He is the Regional Secretary representing Sri Lanka at the Asia Pacific Academy of Ophthalmology. And uh, he can be credited with initiating phaco emulsification at SDJH in 1996. He was a pioneer in establishing treatment of ROP as well as modern techniques of lamellar keratoplasty in Sri Lanka. And his other special interests include glaucoma and medical retina. So I think it's a privilege to have him here, and I'd now like to invite him to deliver his keynote lecture where he will be speaking about uh, special situations in DALC. which is close to our parliament, um, which is about 10 kilometers away from Colombo, the, the main city. This uh, Sri Jayadhanapur is actually the, the administrative capital of Sri Lanka right now. Um, so I'm going to talk uh, about what to do when DALC is not so straightforward. I have no financial disclosures. Well, most of the time, DALC is pretty much straightforward, a big bubble. A brave slash and the deep lamella is excised and the graft is sutured. Well unfortunately sometimes the surgery does not go as straightforward as that. Here I have a trying a big bubble but just fail to get one. Um, so most of the time this happens because the cannula is not deep enough uh, so here it is quite useful to have an intraoperative OCT. The track one you see there is too superficial and then I realize that and then I go in with another track which is track two where I have a better chance of getting a big bubble. Uh, now here I'm injecting air and I'm just getting small bubbles in the anterior chamber but uh, in the stroma and then suddenly I see some small bubbles in the anterior chamber. Now this, my first worry was that I had a rupture, but this can also happen when air goes through the trabecular meshwork. So what I do when I fail to have a big bubble is I try a visco bubble through another channel. I'm injecting viscoelastic, uh, and I'm now getting a nice visco bubble which extends to the trefine edge, and a slash, and the deep lamella is excised. And you can see that all those small bubbles uh, are there in the anterior chamber. Not, there is no, uh, no rupture. And uh, so the air bubbles should have gone through the trabecular meshwork. Well, sometimes you're not sure whether you've got a big bubble. So in this case, you can introduce a small air bubble into the anterior chamber through a paracentesis and the small bubble going into the periphery confirms that there is a, the big bubble. Now sometimes this happens, the brave slash, you're not brave enough and then uh, is not wide enough for you to get your scissors in. So here it's not wide enough and what I do is I inject some viscoelastic through and then now the small bubble has gone to the periphery again, confirming that the viscoelastic has filled the the bubble and now I can open that bubble without any fear. Okay, so here the viscoelastic actually had not gone through to the periphery and I was unable to get to the extreme periphery with the, uh, the dissections properly. The, I couldn't bear the whole decimase membrane but on the other hand if you bear the center bit, center four to five millimeters, you get a wonderful result. And this is what I saw uh, a few days later. Uh, now, if I cannot do a big bubble, I, I do a layer by layer dissection. Here, I use a lamellar dissector to get a dissection plane, start dissection, and then use this uh, instrument which has been designed by Fogler, Fogler's uh, stromal separator, to dissect further. And I go in one direction spirally. Uh, 
uh, sometimes you, you go 360 degrees and then you go maybe another 360 degrees. I rotate the microscope as I go along sometimes and then uh, you get close enough to the decimase membrane or really the pre-decimase layer and you can see, use the intraoperative OCT to uh, realize that you got deep enough and uh, you get a pretty good result. Here, just injecting air, get the cannula and suddenly there is a gib and I think I have got a micro perforation. Here I just put some, I was not sure, I put some air bubbles and the air bubbles are in the anterior chamber now. So what I do here is I just open a track uh, in another area and then inject viscoelastic. I just inject viscoelastic only in the center uh, and try to bear the central decimase membrane. In spite of the rupture there, I'm just able to, there is this uh, rupture there and able to get the graft in and even here the, uh, the post-op picture looks quite good. Um, so here initial failed bubble, I'm trying to get another layer to dissect and unfortunately just here I'm having a uh, perforation in the periphery. Again, I bear the central decimase membrane with a visco bubble and I'm able to bear the central uh, decimase membrane which is clear enough and uh, I managed to get the graft sutured and even here the result looks excellent. Here I'm getting a micro perforation here trying to excise the deep lamella and what I do here is I don't inject any uh, air or viscoelastic into the anterior chamber and leave that bit to the last. It's at a different place because I have rotated the microscope a little bit and leave a little bit of shelf of uh, tissue there and I'm able to get the suture in, the, the graft in and uh, the patient ends up with a uh, very good, with very good vision. Um, here I'm injecting air and seem to get a uh, good air bubble, but suddenly I notice that there is another air bubble which has extended to the periphery. So you can see on the OCT that there is one bubble which extends only up to the trephine edge and there is another bubble which ends up in the, peri in the one side at the limbus. So this is a mixed bubble. Um, so here I open up the anterior chamber in an area where there was no mixed bubble and do a slash and the, you can see that it only uh, opens up the air bubble partially and here again I just inject a little bit of viscoelastic and I don't try to go to the periphery to get the whole uh, decimase membrane bare because I'm not sure where the, uh, the connection is between the two bubbles. Uh, and bear the central decimase membrane and you can see here in the intraoperative OCT there still is a separation between the duas layer and the decimase membrane. Uh, so this is what the patient ended up. Here I am injecting viscoelastic after a failed air bubble and superiorly it doesn't extend to the periphery. I do a paracentesis and try to inject viscoelastic under more pressure. Uh, I don't notice anything wrong at this moment. I open up the bubble and uh, I realize the problem because when I try to remove uh, viscoelastic there, uh, anterior chamber, I get uh, visco coming out from that opening. So now what has happened is there is a separation between the duas layer and the decimase membrane and the decimase membrane is at the bottom rolled up. So what I do here is I aspirated the viscoelastic as much as possible and uh, got an air bubble under and managed to tamponade that. And even here, the patient ended up with pretty good topography 6-9 vision after about a year. Um, so the conclusion here is that you can still have an excellent outcome when DALC is not so straightforward and we don't really need to convert to PKP most of the time. Thank you very much.